So, episode 3, eh? You didn't think we would get this far? This episode is a very special one. It's in collaboration with King's Race Equality Network and South Asian Heritage Month. And I'd like to thank VJ and Jennifer from King's College London for collaborating with us. This episode will be a little different to the previous ones. We'll be exploring a range of topics relating to heritage, culture and history in celebration of South Asian Heritage Month. For this episode, I'm joined by my classmate and also one of the society's new social secretaries, the very fun Aishwarya Jadeja. Hey Aishwarya. Hey Sham, nice to be here. Here I am on this podcast. So before we start, Dara, thoughts on Dara? Are you asking me? Yeah, yeah. I think she's lovely. Really? I think she's so nice. Wait, are you are you being for real? Are you actually yeah, yeah, being, being for real? Yeah, yeah, genuinely, genuinely, genuinely. Okay, <laughs> I think she's wonderful. She's a Scorpio though, like I, I did not see that coming. I thought she was a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> why what, yeah. what about you if you say something bad about I'm her just I'm, like... I'm just not a fan i'm just not a fan i'm just not a fan oh my god i just get Shut bad up. vibes you know what I mean? i'm dara i will protect you i will overthrow this man from his who presidency are you talking to? Who are you talk... i don't Whoa. know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna edit this anyway and on that note let's see what you missed on the last episodes i know the perfect way to solve this um you should go out and live your life <laughs> you can't say that you're being I mean, they're, they're all right. They're all right. <laughs> so would she spin you in the middle of the road? Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you speaking to boys? Focus on your education. You gotta say it with a bit of swad. <laughs> That's exactly what a cool Marcy would do. That's a bit of like, cheeky advertising to all the guys out there. But that nap you take after a big bowl of pasta. This is the worst combination of people to do a podcast. I just want to say, by the way, yeah. you're one of the only people in my life that actually still call me Shuria. Really? Which I really appreciate. Yeah. What do they call you? Like most people, most people call me Ash, but yeah, um, okay. that is kind of my fault. So okay, little little backstory here. So when I was younger, I mean, obviously most people Ishwarya, it's a mouthful. It's a beautiful <laughs> name. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's it's like a whole big like nine letters. That's a lot. That's a lot of pressure mm. for someone that doesn't know how to say that name. So a lot of people just would never be able to pronounce it correctly. Okay. And after like the first few times of them trying to get them right, it just gets a little awkward <laughs> and then you just kind of give up and then you go with whatever like pronunciation they've come up with, which usually ended up being something random like settling on Chopa. Like <laughs> that genuinely happened. Someone was just like, you know what? I can't say this brown name, you so I'm going to call you by a different one. Yeah. yeah. Because like I think it was just I think when that happened it was just after um Shopa Papa Dom of Big, Big Brother. Big Brother. Big Brother, Big that's brother? it. Big Brother, yeah. Yeah, yeah Big yeah. Brother. That was iconic. Shopa Shetty really held her own on that show. Icon. Yeah, anyway, I, I think so, I, I yeah. think I was like four years older probably. <laughs> no, actually I was probably quite older. Four years old? Was I? You know what, yeah. The best memory I have in my life, mm -hmm. um, after she won, I think it was a day later she came to Leicester, there was millions of people what? that sort of paraded through in this car. Did she, I remember the car turned into this one corner and I was standing there with my granddad and there was this like marriage there for some reason and Shilpa in the car turned to us and did like a namaste gesture to my granddad and literally I was going to faint. I was like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That was genuinely the best moment in my life. I, I feel like my story is just going to pay off. <laughs> but Go I'm gonna on. keep going but so anyway like they wouldn't be able to pronounce my name so then I was like okay whatever but like the people that could pronounce my name yeah. were most of the time Indian or Asian right mm. and they'd always ask me so you're named after Aishwarya Rai and I'd be like so I don't know if you guys have heard of Aishwarya Rai like she's she's kind of a big deal she's like a little bit this actress yeah she's she's Meant to be really pretty, like she's. Meant to be. I think she won Miss World. Yeah, like I you mean, don't really, you know, you she's, don't really rate she's her. kind of like a. Yeah, like she's she's kind of a big deal in Bollywood, yeah. or so I've heard. Right <laughs> here, I am. Haven't hit puberty. Don't want to be compared to like one of the most beautiful women in the world. Mm. So then I just started calling myself Ash. But even then, I did not catch a break because at least once a week. Yeah. When I introduce myself, I will hear, oh, like Ash Ketchum, I don't even watch Pokemon. <laughs> my name just basically isn't even my own. <laughs> but I would just like to say I really appreciate it, Sean. You're a really stand-up guy. It's all right. Thank that's, you. That's, I know I like the name. I think it's quite royal. All these other people. Thank you. What are they, like Simran and Priya? 
like boring names. You know what I mean? This oh my is this god. is this is like oh my god. Aishwarya is like it's like what are you doing? Like if there's a Simran or Priya listening I don't care. to this I don't podcast care. I don't care. right now, they're just listen. Your, your Simran, names are so boring, Priya, guys. Please. Stay on. Please stay for me. Forget Sean. They, Just they, ignore him. Don't, I do that anyway. Don't give us a, a zero star review. So, Aishwarya, you, you grew up in England, right? Yes, I did. I, I don't sound like it, but I, I guarantee you, like, I mean, if anyone doubts it, I'll show you my passport. I am British. Um, I'll have you know. I think I'm sure that the podcast listeners are thinking, where do they get this this American woman from i will reveal all currently um <laughs> this, this is it this is it so, this is an exclusive <laughs> the mystery is unsolved um <laughs> i'll i'll give you the lowdown on the go accent on, so on. basically on a december night i was born <laughs> in london i yes i am a sagittarius i don't know if you could tell i could um, i could you know i could <laughs> You could. It was your tone. It was your tone. Shams a cancer, by the way, which I feel like doesn't come across. I feel like you you strike people as a Gemini. No shade. Um, (laughs) So it was, you know, a starry December night. I'm born in England to a Gujarati family. Obviously, at home, we're Gujarati, so most of the time I would speak Gujarati. My parents spoke English, but like for some reason I was like, no, I want to speak Gujarati. Yeah. And so I would exclusively just speak Gujarati. And then at some point, you know, my parents were kind of like, you know, we, we kind of live in a country that mostly <laughs> speaks English. So it would kind of like, kind of be might beneficial need it. You might need it. for you, you need if you kind of, yeah, you might need to learn this language, kiddo. So obviously when I'm at nursery, I'm, I'm speaking English a lot more. Mm. But the minute I got back, you could find me guaranteed all the time, 100%, I would be sitting in front of the TV. Right? All my conscious hours were just spent watching Mickey Mouse, Ugh. Kim Possible, Ugh. American Disney TV shows, That's So Raven. They basically raised me. So did my parents. They did a wonderful <laughs> job. But like, you know. No, we're not giving your parents any credit. <laughs> we're giving, we're giving I mean, like... Zach and Cody credit. <laughs> <laughs> you're up and up and so are you, are you are you still obsessed with with Disney Channel or not really? No, Why? I'm an adult. I don't, I don't watch <laughs> that stuff anymore. You know, I was I was obsessed with um, Zach and Cody, Hannah, Hannah Montana. I love unfortunately, Zach and Cody. Zach really? And Cody, honestly, I I really I'm... wanted to be like Zach and Cody. No, like, even to this day, my dream is to. To, like, live in a hotel forever. And one day I'll you know, do it. one day you're gonna do it. I am more intrigued by you admitting that you used to watch Hannah Montana. I'm very you know proud what? of you for that. It's Debunk, so, it was amazing. It was amazing, masculinity. I Thank it you. It was amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. So, basically, here I was, this little kid, watching yeah. TV 24-7. And, you know, I'm speaking... English more and more, and eventually I kind of picked up an accent from TV. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and it just hasn't left since. It's kind of my defining personality trait. Can so. you can you do can you do it a British accent? <laughs> can you like try? I can try. This I can is actually really interesting. Good. <laughs> this is really interesting. I'm so excited to know. Say um, hello, everybody. Welcome to Spill the Chai. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spill the Chai. This is an exclusive episode with Sham Chitwani and Ishwarya Jadeh. <laughs> and this is my British accent. As you can tell, it's quite, quite authentic. Okay, I can do it. <laughs> you know what? It's crazy because you sound like an American <laughs> trying to do a British accent, but you've been I here know. for your whole life. I, I can't, I can't I understand. Know. So talking about accents, if I'm at home, I'll speak a bit more sort of casually and sort of not as with an English accent as you might have mm-hmm. but if I go out then I sort of put it on a little bit I don't know if that's but is thing, it more but, yeah. that you put on a British accent or is it that you downplay your Indian side mm. because I feel like this is something that like I've spent so much time thinking about like how we were just discussing our names and how you know when I used to introduce myself to people it would always be a very anglicized version of my name as opposed to yeah. saying hi I'm Ishwarya you know yeah, no, I do understand. Or sometimes altogether, I just be like, I'm Ash because I knew my name was a little difficult. It's not native to this country, so mm. I would just kind of. And with you as well, like, well, what's the anglicized version of your name? I think it's, I think it's just like Sham, but I do feel Sham. I don't know. I think my 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 name is quite a simple name, but like I do feel that especially when I'm talking to um an English person, I sort of subconsciously try to show them that I'm sort of British and not like one of the Indians, if that makes sense. Like, and obviously, like, that's not a good thing, and I shouldn't be doing that. But I feel a lot of us subconsciously have this thing where 
we tr sort of try to show other people that we're sort of anglicised and we're sort of sort of we sort of integrated into this country. All right. So, so uh, one thing about me and Aishwarya, or Aishwarya and I, I should say, our parents are from the same place. Where are your parents from, Aishwarya? Well, my mom's from Kenya. Okay. And my dad's from India. Oh, I didn't and know that. Sham and I. Yeah. You didn't. I thought. I thought oh both. I thought both. I thought Shaam. that was why we had something in common, but it's alright. I mean, half in common. Uh, I feel like Sham's gonna say it, but now I'm just gonna say it anyway. So Sham's parents are from Kenya. Yeah. Completely. But we're also both Gujaratis. Mm. So. Wait, where, yeah. whereabouts, whereabouts in Kenya is your mother from? So my mom's from Nairobi. My father is from Really? There. Yeah. Have you have you ever been to Nairobi? I've been to Mombasa, where my mom is from, for a wedding, but I was only a little baby. But last summer I went with my grandma to Tanzania, and that was my first sort oh, cool. of exploration of Africa. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was amazing. Like It was like something I really wanted to do for a long time, because obviously I am Indian, mm -hmm. but also I do sort of relate to being Kenyan and African. But yeah, it was, it was amazing. Have you been? I have been to Kenya when I was very very little yeah. so I lived there for a little while in Nairobi and I have seen Mombasa as well so all our listeners here Kenya is absolutely stunning. Mm. You should definitely go sometime. I don't recommend traveling during a pandemic. <laughs> but you know, if this ever blows over, do consider yeah. visiting Kenya. Yeah. It's, it's stunning. Yeah. You know how you were just saying, like you have some kind of cultural roots mm. in Kenya. Yeah. I completely agree. There's so much that sometimes I'm not even aware of that in my household is actually of Kenyan origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something that isn't really widely known, but there has been a significant Asian presence in specific, I think particularly the Eastern Horn of Africa, mm. so countries like Uganda, yeah. Tanzania, and Kenya, and obviously a lot of kind of cultural integration has happened yeah. because of that, and it's just, it's crazy to see how much of that has kind of trickled down into the culture that we have brought over here when our parents have moved. Do your parents say words in Gujarati? That are actually Swahili and you yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yes! Like, this <laughs> I fully agree. shocked yeah. me. Like Fugyo is, mm -hmm. is broom, but in mm -hmm. but it's in Swahili. It's not in this is, it's not Gujarati. Just to give you a heads up, this is this podcast is now just a Gujarati lesson. <laughs> <a> Swahili lesson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What else I mean, hey, like, you're learning something, right? It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like Basi. And I remember I, I was telling my other mate, who was Gujarati, oh, like, pass mm -hmm. me the Basi. <laughs> and he was like, what? And, like, I was like, do you not understand it? And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and then I had a I had a full-on debate with him saying that Basi is Gujarati. And it turns out it's not. You know, How did that feel, Sean? You know what? I was a bit sad. But I was a bit, I was a bit happy because I can kind of put something. on my CV that I can speak yeah, Swahili. I, yeah, I'm fluent in Swahili. <laughs> can you actually say like a full sentence or phrase in Swahili? I can, you know. Are you ready can for you? it? What is it? Basically, so I do this thing, right? And I, so when I was going, I wanted to learn like, a sentence and sound mm -hmm. really convincing uh, when I say it. Um, so then mm -hmm. people just think that I know. So I learned this mm -hmm. phrase. It's, get ready for it. Nina <laughs> uh, That's it. I, is that not impressive? World. Is that not impressive? Did you not think I was, Ish, I was. I'm shook. I was, I, was, I was an African No, person. I was getting ready to laugh. <laughs> what does that mean? It means it means like um, it's nice meeting you all or something. It is nice meeting you all. It is to our listeners. It is. It is. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very fitting phrase. <laughs> but um, but the only issue is is that like I'll walk into a hotel and I'll say it to like the staff or something. They like continued the conversation with me in Swahili, which obviously didn't end well because I didn't know what they were, what they were saying. So I wouldn't recommend it, but it was quite cool to say it. As, as someone who is who can be extremely socially awkward, my best way of dealing with that situation just smile and nod. Yeah, smile. But and smile I and actually nod. also know a Swahili phrase, but it is. Go on. I mean, it doesn't compare to yours oh, because right, I, okay. I don't. Uh, you, we should have done. Your, we should have done yours first. I know. Now you've like set the bar so high. <laughs> okay, so are you ready? Go on. Mogo yango ina uma, which means. Wait, let me get. Okay. I would like to order some chili mogo. No. No. <laughs> Not even close. Okay, <laughs> I'll give you another shot. You want to try? My stomach is hurting. That was very close. Oh god, uh, what is it? <laughs> my leg hurts. No way. Yeah. No. I, you know I, I was, I was yeah. even thinking about leg, and then I chose stomach. Yo. See, you, you do know. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely bit. putting it on my CV now. <laughs> Your skills showcase them. <laughs> I know. I'm just going to fluke it every time and they'll be like, yeah, fair play, you know. So it's crazy how much like Swahili 
kind of seeps into Gujarati, right? Mm. I mean, half the time I don't even know if I'm speaking in Gujarati or Swahili. <laughs> it's crazy because people will be like, so you speak Gujarati fluently? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just, you know, like, and English. Yeah, yeah. And the scary thing is that I don't, I don't know, like, which words are which. Like, you know how we mm. know that certain words are in English and certain words are in Gujarati. Mm-hmm. Within Gujarati, I don't know which words are not Gujarati. So basically, you just don't know if you're making sense to someone else that is completely Gujarati. <laughs> I would need to completely relearn the language in order to say <laughs> I can speak it properly. Which is crazy, though, because mm. I do feel like... Do you not feel like you do speak it properly? I feel like I do, but then when I go to Gujarat, I feel like I can't really understand what people are saying. And even though I know certain words, I think it's, it's a, there's a way of speaking it which I'm not very good at. Like, it's a bit like British Gujarati, that how I speak it, and how I sort of understand it. But I feel it's not really the sort of authentic, traditional Gujarati that, I, that like, we really should know. Which actually is a very interesting point that you bring up about, you know, authentic Gujarati. And I feel like I'm going to say that for us to discuss in our next, next segment. But for now, (laughs) the one thing I am going to say is whether you feel like you can speak Gujarati or not, I guarantee you, Sham, you probably know Gujarati insults very well, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And here is our next segment, (laughs) Gujarati insults. I told you guys, this this podcast is basically a language lesson, <laughs> so <laughs> stay tuned. But anyway, so Sham, what's your yeah. favorite Gujarati insult? Mm, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I feel like I feel I'm quite experienced with this because I get insulted. You must be. I get insulted. You in must Gujarati have. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, my favorite, my favorite is probably Delevaja. Delevaja means go to hell. What? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Is it really? It's like, yeah, tel levaja, like tel pivaja, tel levaja is like the Gujarati way of saying go to hell, but oh it God. actually translates to go bring some oil or go drink some oil, which I think is hilarious because it's like, how do you express the sentiment of telling someone to go to hell yeah. by telling them to drink or get some oil? <laughs> That is just beyond me. Like, I just... Gujarati as a language is just such a wild mm. ride, you know? I I feel like my favorite one yeah. is probably Gadero, <laughs> which is the Gujarati equivalent of saying or calling someone an idiot, right? Yeah. I've heard that one quite a lot. <laughs> but literally translated but... <laughs> is, is donkey, donkey, right? Donkey. And, like, yeah. I always thought it was just donkey. So, like, if I'm, if I'm arguing with my sister... I'd be like, yeah, that's what I thought. Kaderi. And then, <laughs> then my mum would go oh crazy. God. And I'm like, You're so any, I didn't say anything bad. I didn't say Jeez. anything bad. <laughs> just after Raksha Bandit. Oh my God. <laughs> um, there, I mean, I think it's just crazy how like so much, like if you were to translate certain Gujarati sayings into English, they just sound so weird, but it also is so funny and interesting <laughs> to see that happen. Yeah. So, oh, Another Gujarati insult that I really love, yeah. one of my personal favorites, like top three, cool. is Tari Sasu Nikapar. Do you know what that means? <laughs> no. The direct English translation is your mother-in-law's forehead. What it is the equivalent of is mm. saying, yeah, right, as if, I don't believe you. It's just crazy. Like, how did that come about? Why is that an know. insult? What is it about your mother-in-law's forehead <laughs> that warrants it being an in- insult? Like, it's just, it's do you never wonder where these things come mm. from? Why is it so insulting to be told to go bring some oil or drink some oil? Yeah. I feel like we've been speaking about Gujarati too much though. Like I, I'm so sorry yeah. for our listeners. I, <laughs> I feel like okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna think of a Hindi insult. Oh okay. Okay. Oh, I've got one. Go on. Buddha ho got there. <laughs> I've had, I've had. I think this is something said by Amitabh Bachchan. Oh, is it? I think he said it in a movie once or something. And like, you know, everything that Amitabh Bachchan says is basically gold. Or ho got there bap means your dad must be old. <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> why is that an insult? <laughs> That's so funny, though. Right? That's a good one. Speaking of Bollywood, though, Aishwarya, mm. favorite Bollywood yes. actor. Ah. Uh... Varun Dhawan. You you knew, ew, you knew the answer ew, to this one. Ew, <laughs> ew. It's got to be Varun Dhawan. I mean, yeah. ever since Nick Jonas left my life, someone <laughs> had to fill his place, and it's been Varun Dhawan. I can't mm. help it. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> isn't he like a, isn't he like a kids actor or something? Doesn't he make just kids is he? Films? 
Yeah. No, he doesn't. He was in... He's... No. Hmm. Ever since I've come to university, I think the difference here is is that at university... And again, like, I now can proudly say, like, if Varun Dhawan's film has come out, <laughs> I'm going to watch it, you know? <laughs> I will be there. I, I love Bollywood. <laughs> but I think the difference between me when I was younger mm. and me now is that I have become more comfortable with my cultural identity and yeah. my cultural expression. And the connection I feel between this and Bollywood mm. is that, you know, for a lot of the British Asian diaspora, primarily, I feel like the two primary methods of our kind of exposure to um, our culture is either through our family yeah. or it's through media or Bollywood, mm. you know? And for me, like, obviously, I come home, I watch Bollywood, I watch Indian soap operas, and they're so different to western films or yeah. western media yeah. western soap operas and you know like they have a very different i mean obviously they will be different because they're two completely different cultures mm. but bo most bollywood films are basically kind of like whenever i used to explain them to my non-south asian friends i'd always be like yeah they're basically like musicals i'd be almost critical of them because yeah, I wanted yeah, yeah. to distance myself from yeah. that image because I felt like they wouldn't understand. Mm. And it's kind of like, I never, firstly, I never gave them the chance to because I was mm. already ashamed because I was like, it's so different to what we see in the West. It's not going to be understood or appreciated for what yeah. it is. Yeah. I think there was almost this sense of kind of protection as well, because for me that, you know, again, that was one of the two primary ways in which I got to engage with my own culture mm. that I was almost so protective of it that I would kind of not want to discuss it with people that I felt like had the opportunity to criticize it yeah. without understanding it. Yeah. And so like I would almost kind of like hide that part of myself and mm. switch between part of me that is all like up for you know Indian traditions and dressing up and celebrating and yeah. you know like speaking Gujarati and watching Bollywood and having authentic Indian <laughs> food and the side of myself that I presented when I wasn't at home. I think that is really true. I'm um, also I remember like so we go to India sort of every year, um, and especially mm -hmm. at school when I used to go. Um, I used mm -hmm. to tell my sort of non Asian friends that I, I went to India. But it was sort of a, like, not, I don't want to say embarrassing, but it was sort of, they sort of realised, like, oh, maybe he's not so, like, us, if that makes sense. Like, he, he goes, they were like, oh, do you, do you still go back home? And that kind of thing. Like, it sort of brings that barrier back again. Um, and I also remember, sort of, I would only show them pictures from the holiday that were from really nice, sort of, areas in Mumbai that looked quite Western. Um, and, like, the times when we used to go to, sort of, like, more villagey areas, um, I would never show them those pictures because... I sort of wanted to show them that India is all is like very Western and sort of hide that um, sort of authentic part of it, if that makes sense. And I feel like there is this sort of subconscious thing about trying to to be Western. Um, and like, even though we are sort of diaspora, we are from like, we originate from India, there is this sort of thing about trying to hide it maybe you just articulated perfectly what i was trying to kind of say with the bollywood mm. argument as well is just that the fact that it wasn't western and it yeah, shouldn't yeah, yeah. be because yeah. it's not a western culture it's not western media so it yeah. shouldn't have to follow in those footsteps but the fact that it wasn't western made me feel like it wouldn't be understood or that it wasn't good enough obviously like that is very painful for me to admit like it's something that I'm embarrassed to admit that I used to see myself in that way and see my culture in that way but I feel like that's something that so many people of color experience in regards to their culture yeah when they are exposed to it I feel like we're constantly trying to validate the fact that we are British and the way we do that is by rejecting our heritage, basically. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying Bollywood is our heritage, but I just, you know, <laughs> take Bollywood as a metaphor for our clothing or language or yeah. certain traditional habits. That side of ourselves is downplayed in order to validate this mm. British identity. Yeah. When, in fact, I think 
it's it's such a hard and difficult process but those two parts of ourselves are equally valid because we're both british citizens mm. you know like whatever country you're from if you have that passport you are a citizen of that country and yeah. that's not something that can be taken away from you regardless of your skin color regardless of your heritage but despite that as well despite your citizenship that doesn't negate your heritage either mm. that will always be yours and i think that's something that's so difficult for you know again i'm speaking from personal experience but i feel like for people of a diaspora to kind of just work with because yeah. it's so difficult to kind of reconcile these two very contrasting cultures sometimes more than two sometimes three you know like for mm. example with my mom um and we've talked about this before but like i was i was learning about this and she's what would be called a twice migrant because well not her because she grew up in kenya but her parents would be considered twice migrants because they came from india and then grew up in kenya and then came to Britain. yeah 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 and it's like, how do you combine and fuse all these different cultures mm. together? Honestly, the diaspora experience is just so varied and complex and broad. And I feel like it's not talked about enough because that's difficult, especially when you're a child and you're in this environment that's very, you know, I mean, this will vary for certain people, but like, for example, very kind of um, true to your heritage. But then yeah. the kind of environment that you are brought up in outside of your home is the complete opposite. How do mm. you merge the two together? Have you ever been called a coconut? Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's crazy because I feel like being in the British Asian diaspora is just this struggle to constantly validate your identity. Yeah. And it's so tough when you're also dealing with the additional factor of just trying to reconcile these two identities together mm. because you have an equal right to both of them. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, like diasporas is, is just, it's a wild topic. And I would love to hear what other people's experience of diaspora has been and how their, like, you know, relation to their culture has kind of how that journey has evolved. Mm. But I think I'm going to wrap up this topic <laughs> yeah. by just saying that you should never feel like you have to validate yourself to someone else. If you are a British Asian, yeah. and if you relate to that, then that's your identity. If you don't relate to your Asian heritage or culture, then that's completely understandable as well, and that's mm. completely fine. I think that's just an individual choice in regards to what we choose to kind of adopt and assimilate into our identity. But if you do feel like you don't express your culture well enough but want to, I would like to set a challenge to <laughs> our viewers. And I'm going to set you a challenge to not anglicize your name when you introduce yourself mm, to someone like outside that. of our culture. I am setting you the challenge to watch a Bollywood film. Or I'm sending yeah. you with a challenge to, if you can speak your language or wanting to learn your native language, mm. go for it. You know, yeah. I'm sick of learning French at school. Like, <laughs> I've spent so many years and all I can say is je suis fromage, you know, like, <laughs> isn't try, it I, isn't try it I am cheese or something? <laughs> Don't correct me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, see my, like, I, I was not the best French student. <laughs> yeah. But I, I can speak Gujarati better. It's fine. Um, right. yeah, but I, th I think sorry. that is a really good point because I think um, in terms of an identity crisis, I think we long to be either Indian for us or like British. Um, but I think it's I think realizing that British we are both being but like being British Asian combined as a separate identity is sort of a really good way to do it um, and like sort of understanding your the history of, of British Asians um, and sort of understanding that you're a combination of the two as a separate culture um, is a sort of really good way of, of going around it. So all I'm going to say is express whatever you feel comfortable with mm. and if you want to express more of your culture challenge yourself push your boundaries push yourself to be the person you want to be and engage with your 
roots or heritage. No, absolutely. And um, I think one way that we we can sort of have a greater understanding um, of our heritage and culture is um, learning about our history, um, learning about sort of South Asian history or specifically the areas that you're from, I think really help um, sort of embed this um, sort of background and sort of heritage culture um, sort of within you um, and really helps you to sort of understand where you're from um, so I, th- I think um, a lot of you probably know but Aishwarya and I are both history sh- students at King's um, which is quite rare we're probably like we're probably like the, the only two sort of Asian history students ever <laughs> here to represent you know <laughs> I know I know but like I think what's interesting is sort of we had this year um one whole module on Indian history. It was called Mughals to Modi. So yeah. it was quite, it covered a huge chunk of South Asian and Indian history mm. specifically, which was an amazing ride because I feel like I, through that module, had learned things that I didn't even know about. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. the gravity of partition, for example. Mm. So that's something that, you know, like we obviously know that that happened, the partition of South Asia. Um, but just the fact, like, we, we don't get to hear how much of a violent and just devastating and traumatic event it was. And yeah. that was the first time that I had any understanding of just the gravity of the events that led up and occurred after the partition of South Asia, hmm. which is so interesting as well. And I think that's why it's so important for us to take that initiative I mean, obviously, there have been greater calls recently um, to kind of reform British education systems and Mm. be more inclusive of other cultural histories, which I think is definitely important. And I think is definitely something that we all need to fight for and advocate for. Yeah. Because this ultimately, I mean, the thing that I was talking about with diaspora, it does kind of boil down to representation. Mm. Like in Western media, you know, like... I feel like Bollywood, for me, was such a big deal because in Western media, the only representation that I could identify with was the Asian nerd, the Asian <laughs> doctor, yeah, the convenience store owner whose second name was always Patel, <laughs> you know? And yeah, I think yeah. it's really important for us to finally start reclaiming our narrative mm. through educating ourselves on our history. So I feel like it's really important to engage with that a little more. Definitely. And I think I think we have to give a big shout out to our history module, sort of leader. module leader, Dr. Priya the Atwal. The very the best, well established. The best teacher ever. Wonderful. <laughs> she was so lovely. And she actually has a book coming out yeah. very soon. Sham, what's it called? It's called Royals and Rebels. This is this is not this is not a, not a paid ad- advertisement. We are not being sponsored. <laughs> Although, if you do want to pay us, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I think reading sort of even like reading history books on Indian history is a sort of great way of sort of really connecting to your your heritage and culture and sort of having a greater understanding of of where you came from is never is never a bad thing. If anything, knowledge is power, guys. So pick up a book. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I think I think it's it's really good that the organizers of the South Asian Heritage Month have sort of decided to to do this because I think promoting sort of learning about your your history and your heritage um is a sort of really you know like it sort of really contextualizes um sort of your background. Um and I even remember that one of in one of the modules we learned about diaspora um and we learned about, I think it was sort of 1970s um, England and sort of um, the sort of struggle that some diaspora went through. Um, and I think like that was sort of directly relating to my parents kind of kind of time. Um, and it sort of really, it was the first time ever that I felt so connected to what I was learning, um, if that makes sense. Um, and it sort of really felt quite empowering um, and sort of, I remember going back home thinking like, wow, like we we have our own history as well. And like, that's 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 a really sort of powerful feeling, I think. I completely agree, which 
Uh, I agree. It's liberating and powerful. So that that brings the end of our podcast, our episode three. So if you listened all the way up to here, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> and please do take into consideration the challenge that we put forward for you. And yeah, just take the time to really reflect on where you come from and be proud of it. We just want to say a massive thank you to the organisers of the South Asian Heritage Month. Um, I thought you were going to say thank you to me, but okay. Oh, and oh. Mm, <laughs> mm, and thank you to um, I'll Ice leave now. now. Ice Warrior as well. Um, Welcome for this for this one, like two and a half hour podcast recording session that we just. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna end it on a high. We've got a new segment called the Papa Fun Joke, uh, and. These are basically dad jokes. In a South Asian context. Go on, Aishwarya, say it. What did the boy say to his mom as he was leaving for school? What did the boy say to his mom as he was leaving for school? Mumbai. Do you get it? <laughs> Do you get it? Like, you mm. know, like the Mumbai, like... Yeah. Mom, yeah. bye. <laughs> okay, we should let let's just stop. Cut. Yeah, <laughs> All right. I think that's good. That's okay. good. That's good. <laughs>